Breakfast is definitely my favorite meal of the day, and it's also my favorite time of day to entertain. There are endless choices, and on today's show, I'm going to demonstrate four spectacular recipes. An oven-baked French toast, which eliminates any frying. We also have a pea and ham quiche, which is bright green in color because more than half the peas are frayed right into the custard. It is delicious. And we have a Dutch baby pancake. This will serve two, only a third of a cup of flour in this entire pancake, and it is delectable with homemade jam. And a fontina speck and onion strata, layers of wonderful country Italian bread with ham and onion and cheese and custard. Your family, your friends will adore breakfast at your home. I have some observers here in the kitchen today, Francesca and Sharky. They wanna learn how to make French toast, and I'm sure you do too. French toast can be a little challenging to make if you're serving more than a few people. That's why we came up with the idea of transforming my favorite French toast recipe into one I call oven-baked French toast. Now I can make 12 slices at a time, and you can too, let me show you. We love to make French toast with flavorful bread. A wonderful challah bread. You can use a French brioche like this. The French call French toast hand perdu, lost bread, because it's a way of reviving bread. And French bread, you know, becomes dry after a day sitting on your counter and you have to do something with it, make it into breadcrumbs or French toast. But the brioche, I'm using a fresh loaf. It can be a day old loaf too. And I'm going to use the end slice because we have hungry people and I don't even like to waste the end. I would cut the crust off just from the end and cut the bread into half inch slices, maybe a little thicker than a half an inch. Using a serrated knife like this makes the slicing very easy. You can use store-bought white thick sliced bread. Um, if you're on a diet, you can use thin sliced bread, but don't up the slices that you consume. So there, we have just the right number of slices. Hey dogs, are you waiting for your French toast? They haven't had breakfast yet and they're going to get hungry. So six eggs, six large eggs in a big bowl for one loaf or 12 slices of bread. And these are farm fresh eggs. I just collected them from the hen house and they are so beautiful. Really hard shelled and gorgeous yellow yolks. Six. And break those up with a whisk or with a fork. One and a quarter cups of whole milk. You can use heavy cream if you want. You can use half and half. Mom used to use whatever was in the kitchen. So one and a quarter cups of milk. And very important, the flavoring. A big pinch of salt. I use kosher salt. One tablespoon of sanding sugar. I'm using sanding sugar because it's a little bit sparkly and a little bit larger grain than regular granulated sugar, but you can use regular sugar. And two and a half tablespoons, this is kind of important, the orange flavored liqueur. I'm sure in your liquor cupboard you have some orange flavored liqueur. So two and a half tablespoons. And the zest of a nice bright skinned orange. I find this is the easiest way to zest an orange or a lemon. If you don't have an orange, you could use lemon. But the orange just adds such a great flavor with the orange liqueur. Approximately one and a half teaspoons of orange zest. And uh, cut the orange in half and just squeeze about two tablespoons of orange juice right into your mixture. Again, it just adds a flavorful deliciousness to the mixture. Now, I have two baking sheets lined with a non-stick pad. The oven is preheated to 375 degrees, and um, these non-stick pads are very, very good for lack of cleanup. You're gonna have everything on the pad and it just comes right off. Uh, it also is non-stick. 
And you could use parchment, but not in this recipe because we're going to put these under the broiler and parchment would burn. And now soak your bread, but not too long. You want to just dip it one side, turn it over. Notice how I'm using the fresh slice of bread to keep the drips right here. It's just a little tip. Just lift it out. Don't leave it in too long because the bread tends to soak up a lot of this liquid. And just continue doing this until the liquid is used up and the bread is all soaked. Boy, does that look delicious. And uh, how nice that you're not frying anything. That's the beauty of this particular French toast recipe. Just letting the last slice soak everything. Now take this to a 375 degree preheated oven, put it on the middle rack, and I have two ovens here. I'm just putting one in the top and one in the bottom. 10 minutes. Look how nice and golden these look, but they need to get a little bit brown. So make sure that the oven is on broil at 480 degrees and watch it two to three minutes, done. This is really attractive looking, really delicious. Now, my brothers could eat, oh, about six pieces of this each. I could eat two. How about you? I suggest that you invite some friends over this weekend. Make a nice breakfast. Serve it hot out of the oven. It's best that way. And I would sprinkle with a little bit more sugar. Since we haven't fried this, and there's no grease and no calories from butter. You could even add a little tiny bit of butter on top like that. Let it melt right into the hot toast. That should melt nicely. And then a little bit of syrup, real Vermont maple syrup or Maine or New Hampshire or New York State. And that is a delicious breakfast. Enjoy. When I was catering, quiche was the most popular of all dishes asked for by my clients. And I know why, because it is a rich, savory custard filled with cheese, vegetables, meats, baked in a buttery pastry crust. This is pot brise. You'll need a half a recipe of pot brise to fill an eight inch quiche pan like this. This is a removable bottom, and the reason for the removable bottom is that you take it out of the ring for serving. Quiche is a French term derived from the German word kuchen, meaning cake, and it is baked. The crust should be pre-cooked because you don't want it soggy with the custard. This is chilled pot brise. If it gets too warm, it will start to break, and you don't want that. My producer asked me to bring in my favorite rolling pin. This I bought in Paris, I can't tell you how many years ago, but on my very first trip to Paris, I bought this particular mahogany rolling pin. I don't think they sell them in this weight and color any longer, but it is the best rolling pin, so perfect. Now to get it into the pan, an easy way to do that is to roll it on your pin like this and then lift it up. You can pretty much move any pastry like this and then unroll it onto the pan. Now, quiche and tarts should have a strong side crust. By taking the pastry and then just folding it down like that and pressing with my thumbs like this. Once you form your crust, then put it back in the refrigerator to chill thoroughly before you then blind bake it. Blind baking doesn't mean that you're blind, it means that you are <laughs> baking the crust without a filling. So there, that's a nice thicker sided crust. Now just press that down like that. And you can do this with your thumb like this and go around 
and knock it off. Or you can just roll your pin like that across the top, and that just cuts the entire crust off like that. Very neat, very easy. Now this can be made into little tartlets. Um, don't throw it away. So chill this. Now this one has already been chilled and it's docked. It means that you are making little air holes to prevent kind of eruption while it's in the hot oven. Now line it with a piece of parchment. And if you want to make your parchment fit really well, just fold it like this. Just those lines help it fit better. And then fill it with pie weights. I'm using lentils. These are lentils that I have used for a long, long time. And this weights down the bottom and prevents the crust from erupting. And keep these. Cool them, put them back in the jar. Uh, I have some that are probably 20 to 30 years old and they work just as well as when they're fresh. So it's 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Remove the paper and all the weights and reduce the oven temperature to 375 and bake until the whole crust is a pale golden color. That'll take another 10 to 15 minutes. Now we're making the filling for the quiche. In a saucepan, one and a half teaspoons of a good olive oil and a quarter of a cup of white onion, diced. And we're gonna saute that until it's translucent. Quiche fillings can be pretty much anything, but today I'm using frozen peas. And you'll need a half a cup of heavy cream. Mm, so good. And six tablespoons of milk. And simmer this for 10 minutes. Next step, puree. I just pour the mixture right into a blender jar. The pureeing will cool the mixture a little bit as well as change the color. And now this will be added to two eggs and one egg yolk. Make sure the mixture's not too hot so that the eggs don't curdle or cook prematurely. And this is ready to add to the pre-baked pastry shell. We have our shell here. See how nice the color is? It's just perfect. This is a well-baked shell. It has a gorgeous bottom. It lifts out. That's exactly how you want your quiche shell to be. And we have some ham and some peas to embellish the quiche itself. You can sprinkle a quarter of a cup of peas. Add those to your quiche and about a tablespoon of diced ham. Make sure you distribute it evenly. There. Okay, so get your quiche right into the preheated oven, 375, and bake until the center is set and the top is slightly puffed. That's gonna take just 20 to 25 minutes. So now the quiche are out of their rings. How big a piece do you want? I want, oh, about that big. The crust is crunchy and gorgeous. Dr. Seuss would be proud. This is the quintessential green eggs and ham. Enjoy. Now this pancake, the Dutch baby pancake, may change your perception about what a pancake should be. This is very easy to prepare and one of the most impressive to serve. I guarantee it'll be the star attraction at your next breakfast table. And you have to make one at a time, so it's great to have multiples of the same size pan. Don't over mix the batter. That's the first rule of this recipe. It's a third of a cup of flour and you can break it up a little bit with a whisk. You don't want to overmix. You want some lumps. Two eggs and a half a cup of cold milk. And you can just put the eggs right into the half a cup of milk and break them up with a fork. This will eliminate overmixing the eggs and milk with the flour. I suggest that even though the recipe doesn't have any salt, I always add a pinch of salt. 
break those eggs up. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, in a heavy enameled cast iron pan, melt four tablespoons of butter. Don't skimp on the butter. It's part of the pancake. Now, cast iron like this is inexpensive, nonstick, and practically indestructible. And uh, a cast iron skillet is a versatile way of cooking just about anything. So add your egg mixture. You can, well, you can just use a whisk or a rubber spatula like this to mix this in. And as I said, a few lumps are good. Now this recipe is for a 10 inch skillet and just a little dusting of freshly grated nutmeg. You might have the old fashioned nutmeg grater. This one works better. It's a wood rasp. Okay, so get your pancake right into the melted butter and put it right into a 425 degree preheated oven. Bake until the pancake is golden brown, about 15 to 20 minutes. Set your timer for 15 minutes. So this is what happens to that simple egg and flour mixture. Now quickly, dust it with powdered sugar. It deflates so quickly, so work really fast. The sugar will melt and glaze the pancake. And just get it right back into the oven, two to three minutes. So here is the Dutch baby. And squeeze some fresh lemon juice all over the top. There will be a little deflation, as you can see. And cut. I think a half per person. And here, slather the top with some homemade jam that I made last fall and eat immediately. As you can see, Dutch babies don't wait for anyone, but thankfully they are just as delicious after they've collapsed. Hosting breakfast or brunch is oh, just one of my favorite ways of entertaining. Lately I've been experimenting with a new kind of baked egg dish. It's called a strata. It's a one dish egg casserole that combines layers of cheese, vegetables, meat, and beautiful day old bread. And the best part of it is that it can be prepared the night before, refrigerated, and then put in the oven before your guests arrive. It's uh, very tasty. So this is a day old Italian country loaf. Uh, we got this at one of our favorite bakers here in New York City. But many people are making this kind of very airy bread. It's moist inside and very hard, crusty on the outside. This makes a delicious strata. And uh, we're including in this particular strata, Vidalia onions. And they've developed an international reputation as one of the world's sweetest onions. This is a Vidalia onion. It's grown in one of 20 counties in Georgia. The flavor is due to a unique combination of soil and climate that's found in that part of Georgia. Approximately 225 growers cultivate these Vidalia onions on over 14,000 acres. And due to the introduction of controlled atmosphere storage, Vidalia onions are available all the way through December. And we have three tablespoons of butter melting. To that, we're going to add that one onion. And so saute this. It's so white and so sweet, and you don't cry when you cut it up. Okay, so we're gonna bring that up. Uh, we have 10 eggs, 10 whole eggs, and this is the custard mix. One teaspoon of salt, one cup of Parmesan. I'm gonna just break up the yolks. The custard is milk, eggs, cheese, and flavoring. Add three cups of whole milk. One cup of Parmesan cheese, finely grated. 
and the garlic. You can add it raw or you can add it to your onions. I like adding it to the onions just to cook it a little bit. And you can sprinkle this with a little bit of salt and freshly ground black pepper. Get the juices running from these onions. It's very fragrant. And we have some thyme, two teaspoons of fresh thyme leaves. The onions take about 15 minutes. I think we are ready to get our big casserole dish and show you how to layer this beautiful strata. So now we're putting together the strata. It's a simple process of taking the bread and shingling it. It's like putting a roof on a house. You're just layering cheese, speck. This is the speck, this wonderful smoky ham, and onions. These are the onions. Look how caramelized they've become and just put the onions in between each layer. And then just keep going the whole way before you add your lovely custard. Make sure you use everything up pretty evenly. And the beauty of this is that you can make this last night, refrigerate it, and have it ready for breakfast the next day. This would be very delicious, served with a uh, green salad, a spinach salad would be nice. And now once it's layered, you pour your custard over the entire thing. The bread will, in the next two hours, soak up all this custard, and then you will be ready to bake these layers of delicious flavor-infused day-old bread. So uh, cover this with a big sheet of plastic wrap and put in the refrigerator and let it rest. So after two hours in the fridge, you can see that the bread has plumped up. The strata is ready to bake. In a piece of foil lined with parchment, just spray the parchment a little bit with nonstick spray. Cover. I don't like to put aluminum on my food, so I always line my aluminum with parchment paper and tuck this under. Make sure your oven has been preheated to 325 degrees and bake this covered for one whole hour, then uncover and bake for about 20 minutes more until the top is golden brown and crusty. You'll see. I find it's best to cut the strata with a knife because the crusts are really crusty, even though the bread is soft and fluffy. This looks so good. Very delectable. And then just spoon it out on your serving plate. Wouldn't this be great with a really pretty green salad? I like to top it off with a little bit of fresh parsley and another piece. So gather up your favorite ingredients, your favorite cheeses. Goat cheese would be delicious prosciutto ham instead of speck. So this one's for me. So gather your favorite ingredients, create your own strata. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. In a blender, combine four eggs, a cup each of milk and flour, and one quarter cup sugar, along with half a teaspoon of lemon zest and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Divide the batter between four small heated skillets. Scatter with blueberries. Bake at 400 degrees until puffed, 15 to 18 minutes. Sprinkle with confectioner's sugar and serve immediately.